Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. And today we'll be doing some sci-fi laser fences. Now, I know they don't. <laughs> my little one, my little one acting up. Hey, hey. Let's just quickly jump into it. He, he about to put on his novella. So let's go jump into it. Yeah, talk about a short list. All right, so I took these folder divided tabs here and I cut up some different options just to give myself a sense of what I wanted to go. And ultimately, I went with the full. And it saved some time because I don't got to trim it, right? And I decided to use these binder clips here so that I can paint them. The reason for it is because I'm going to use the Tamiya X23. And that Tamiya gets a little sticky. So I, I didn't feel like dealing with it. And I went ahead and painted it. Now, in my painting, there was some purpose to it. And the purpose was to have it streak in the same direction. I usually paint like that. It's just uh, a painter's intuition or... You know, that if anyone's painted, you know what I'm talking about. But I made sure all the streaks went in the same direction. And I think it gave it a little laser effect also. And it kind of hid all the streaking. Plus later, I go back and do a second coat. It really came out really well. So, letting them dry here. And then went to the Proxon. And you can pause it right there and you can see my dimensions. But my dimensions were ever evolving. So I changed them on the fly because... I dry fitted them just like this and I made sure is this what I want you know uh, instead of trying to guess the dimensions beforehand I dry fit and then I change I change my style boom check mark that's the winner chicken dinner and then somewhere in between time I decided on a depth of the final piece and what I wanted to use so I used one and a half so those are the dimensions I used and then I just went ahead and started procs on them up little measurement and boom just slide them through now when you're using the proxon if you think you have nice cuts basically i only used one side of the cut and discarded the other pretty much because the side that you measured for is the exact size you could be off on the other side if that makes sense uh you guys know that but just in case throwing it out there public uh, PSA, public service announcement. All right. I went ahead and just kept running them through the proxon. All right. Now, I wanted a bevel, but I didn't want to bevel it from the middle. So I marked where the middle was, right, at that one-fourth because the depth is one-half. Marked at one-fourth, and then I just, you know, measured it up against it to see if the angle is what I wanted. I didn't want it to cut into the middle. I wanted it to bevel maybe at the one eighth mark, roughly. It didn't matter. What I did not want was to cut into that, that middle mark. So beveled them all. And then I used the proxon to cut a channel. I basically uh, measured it. It was a rough, a rough measurement maybe halfway, but I wanted them all to be the same so that it would alleviate some of that height difference, trying to get the height difference later. One problem I did run into this was every time I ran the vertical, it would kind of like dip in the well of the proxon. Oh, well. So this is just me doing the second code. And again, I'm just going in the same direction you know, from side to side, basically. It could go east to west, west to east, but it didn't matter. I just went from side to side, make sure those streaks came out um, almost parallel to each other. And that was it. Just, you know, it was real simple, real quick. This project was really quick, and for the results, I was really happy, brought it to the table, and was really, really happy with it. So these were all the pieces. And then I just had black paint. I think it had Mod Podge mixed to it. But I would have preferred probably basing them in gray or even white because I turned them white. So I did have plans to make some gunmetal trimming so that they could fit with both of my tiles. 
didn't get around to it, and I didn't really think it was important to do now. So I went with it. And then I just fitted them in the channels. Now, some of the paint got into the channel, and I would just kind of slice it with the Ulfa knife. This was easier than actually cutting the channel with the Ulfa knife. You know, doing it in the Proxon first was just a lot easier because all I had to do was cut a thin layer of paint. And then I just dry fitted it in. Now, the tabs are over three inches wide. So I marked with the scissor where to cut it. I tried to cut it with the scissors more accurately. Didn't work. So I just kind of roughly eyeballed it where I, you know, faked, snipped it, if, you, if that's a word. And then I used that piece as my masterpiece to cut all the others. First dry fitting it into there. It looked good. The edges weren't poking out. They sit flush against each other, and thumbs up. This just became my masterpiece, and now I'm taking all the other pieces, and I'm just snipping off those little edges. And that's it. Snip. Snip. All right, time to slot them in. And that was it. I was actually, at this point, pretty surprised that, at this point, I didn't need glue. The glue did not have to do what it do. Not today. It had the day off today. Those things were not coming out. And that's it. Rinse and repeat on all of them. Still had to cut channels, you know. But again, it's a lot easier to cut paint than it was to actually make the channel for it and everything. That's it, guys. That's the full array and then i had a couple of extra ones without because maybe they destroy the fence and then i could place that in and this is the setup so i use my tiles here from episode two or video two and that was it it was supposed to be like an academy courtyard type of railing but again everything i build is modular that's the way i like it modularity And then a couple of game shot sessions here of a couple weeks ago or a week ago as of this recording. And this is a new, so my group was escaping a colony attack and they were trying to jump onto the enemy ship. And that's them on the enemy ship. And then a pod came down from the air and boom and bad and rockets and lasers hitting everything and just crazy. And that's it, guys. Real simple, real easy. And let's jump into that outro. But before we do, I saw want to let you know, tigers don't eat honey. That's words to live by. Hey guys, I had to jump in real quick, cut this. I was just about to send this video off into the public spaces of the interwebs. And four guys and a broken dwarf hit me up. I got the picture up on my screen here, but it's going to look like... Anyway, that's movie magic. I really like this. He shared... Uh, something he made with a little inspiration from the incubator pod video that I had uh, a couple weeks ago And I really like this. This came out really cool. It looks like it's just sloshing in there Like ugh, it, it, it looks funky. Anyway, I think I have it up uh, somewhere around here right now But he did it with the pill bottle. He did it with aloe vera gel and then he made these eggs inside and placed it inside the bottle with Crayola Magic Model Clay. And really cool, really cool. So be sure to check those guys out on Instagram, Four Guys and a Broken Dwarf. And this one was made from Nosferatu Unbound. And uh, I, I thank you guys for sharing that. That really was cool, man, sharing that last night. And uh, I had to squeeze it in this video. Let's continue with the outro. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, thank you again for watching. I'm really grateful, really humbled that, you know, I'm having this experience in the hobby. And you can catch me on Twitter, Craftnix, Facebook, Craftnix, Instagram, Craftnix. Come on, catch me on there, man. So let me know what you're working on. If you, you know, if you're doing anything that, that these videos inspired you, man, I would love to see it. And just really humble, hit me up. I mean, I, I love the connections I've made so far, and um, I just look forward to 
to to more, I guess. That's greedy. I don't know. That's um socialist capitalism, maybe? I don't know. Is that a new thing? <laughs> anyway, uh one last plug. I used these in a recent game on my cousin's Twitch channel, Grip It and Rip It. And underscores in between there. You can catch him on there. And he's also uploading the gameplay to Phonetic Space Gaming. And we did a live gameplay. He hit me up. He said, hey, I want to record everybody. I said, I have no problem. Just make sure that everybody else is all right with it. Everybody said they were right. I said, all right. I guess it's time to bring it, right? So it's his first production. It's his first uh, go at it. And it's my... I'm a noob DM myself, so... Uh, we would love any criticism, feedback, and all of that stuff if you guys check it out. Again, on Twitch, he's Grip It and Rip It. On YouTube, it's Phonetic Space Gaming. There's underscores in the Twitch. And if you guys any got any feedback or comments for this channel, man, I'm always open to it, man. Any ways to improve this channel, I, I eat it up, really. That's it, guys. Just really grateful for all of, all of you guys and... Um, just really grateful for this experience and just having a blast doing it. Oh, one last thing. If you guys got any ideas for some crafts, man, I'm writing them down. So, you know, I got the uh, weapon turrets and the crit. Be like, I'm still trying to design those. So be looking forward to it. And if someone beats me to it on YouTube, is that taboo? I don't, I don't know. Maybe someone already did it. I don't know. I'm not in that game, man. So I'm just crafting for my table and bringing y'all along with it. So much love. I'm going to catch you guys later.